Hi, my name is Dr. Kevin Adal, and you are watching Rise and Shine with Phil M. Creative. Welcome, everybody, to a special unplugged version of Rise and Shine. Uh, we send our love to Ronnie and Kami, who are not with us today. So it's just Rex and me, and we're hanging out with a fantastic, well-respected member in the Filipino-American community. He is an activist. He is an author, and he's a professor, and he's a funny guy, and I'm going to make a shameless plug. He was also in a movie that about five people saw. It's my movie, Brown Soup Thing. <laughs> We want to welcome the fantastic Dr. Kevin Nadal. Kevin, welcome to Rise and Shine. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and I think more than five people saw it. But you, I you're still right. Have, yeah, yeah. I still have to see it. So when I do, it'll be six, but maybe more. But no, so many people saw well, it. Well, you know, I, I'll add it. We'll make it lucky seven. I'll add my, you know, I'll <laughs> add the movie there. So yeah, thank there you, you gentlemen. Go. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, uh, Kevin, we thank you for stopping by in Zoom. We know you're in New York, so you're three hours ahead of us. It's a beautiful day in June, in late June. The summer has begun. Yes. Uh, and, you know, we just had a, a month uh, recognizing mental health awareness for Philam Creative. And we mm -hmm. know that that's something that's uh, very uh, prevalent in your mind, in your world. Uh, so, uh, how did you uh, celebrate in the month of May for mental health awareness? Did you do anything special for the month? Yeah, I mean, you know, I celebrated being mentally healthy, I guess. No, but I think um, one of the things that we do is just uh, we try to uh, tell people that it's important for us to seek mental health treatment and to talk about our mental health issues. Um, and, you know, especially uh, during this time, 2021 and 2020 have been rough years for all of us amongst this uh, global pandemic um, and for Asian American folks, especially this rise of anti-Asian violence. Um, and so, you know, for Mental Health Awareness Month, it was really just important um, for me to be part of different um, projects, panels, um, where, you know, we made it normal for people to talk about mental health issues, like all these things are going to get to us. So we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves and of each other. It's also LGBT, LGBTQ Pride Month. And so how then, Kevin, um, you know, are you going to connect that with mental health and also advocating for the LGBTQ community? Sure. You know, yeah, what's funny is when you have multiple marginalized identities, you get lots of months. Um, so I get, yeah. you know, uh, October, Filipino American History Month, yeah. uh, May, Asian American Heritage, Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, and then, yeah, Pride Month, LGBTQ Pride Month um, is June. Um, and, you know, for me, with every month, it's just so important to um, really highlight uh, intersectionalities and in different groups that are oftentimes, you know, um, uh, underrepresented within those months. So during Asian American uh, Pacific, uh, Pacific Islander Heritage Month, I think it's so important for Filipinos to be represented, for mm -hmm. LGBTQ uh, Asian American Pacific Islanders to be represented. And then during Pride Month, you know, for um, LGBTQ queer and trans um, APIs and Filipinos um, uh, and Filipino Americans specifically to be highlighted um, because there's so many of us. Um, and oftentimes when we uh, think about pride, people, uh, you know, tend to shy away from um, looking at how all of our different cultural groups have queer and trans people in them. Uh, Kevin, a, a question for you that, and I'll admit it, it I'm thinking how I can phrase it, but it, it, it's kind of a long question, but, you know, we were coming off of a pandemic. We're still in a pandemic, but, you know, we're, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And obviously you're a professor of psychology. You wrote, uh, your first book was about Filipino American uh, psychology. And, you know, we're a nation that has been really, I mean, the, I think the, I think COVID really exploited a lot of the divide between so many groups uh, during the pandemic. And then uh, a lot of the Asian hate crimes came. What are your thoughts on how different generations of Filipinos and Filipino Americans have reacted to what's going on with the pandemic? with uh, the crime in our country. What are your thoughts on that? Especially with regard to like different, are, are you seeing that different groups are handling things yeah. differently? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 all different um, situations, but all similar dynamics, right? Like different generations of Filipino Americans um, in this country will have 
uh, different perspectives, experiences, worldviews um, of what's happening, right? So prior to the pandemic, it might have been generally on things like um, politics and sex and, uh, you know, religion and conservative um uh, beliefs and so forth. Um, but now we add in things like wearing masks and whether we trust healthcare um, or science or um, and additionally to things like, you know, what we had already mentioned, religious views and um, and so forth. Um, but I think, you know, with this pandemic, um, it's been it's been complicated even more. Like I'm seeing folks who are of older generations who um, are typically you know immigrants and um, oftentimes conservative or Republican, um, where you know they may still have those conservative views, um, but they're also seeing the real impact of COVID nineteen, and especially if they are in healthcare or they're nurses, and we're losing so many people um, in our communities. You know, in fact, like the recent um, reports found that. That Filipino American nurses um, are the highest ethnic group, or the ethnic group that's that's most targeted out of all um, nurses uh, to have died from COVID nineteen. Um, and so, um, you know, so I think there's there's sort of like a, a disconnect with those things. Like, no longer can a lot of those folks uh, just maintain, you know, some of these views um, that. Uh, uh, you know, it, everything is a conspiracy, or you know, a lot of the Filipinos who I know have had like um, very, or especially Filipino immigrant elders, on um, very conservative views, and thinking that like a lot of uh, liberals and Democrats, I don't know how political we can get here. Um, they're just thinking about like how they, um, you know, they don't believe anything they say, um, or don't believe the CDC, or don't believe Fauci. Um, but then also, you're seeing so many of your friends and family die. Right. So, um, you know, it's just it, it, there's a disconnect. But I think generations will always uh, have different perspectives. Um, this is why I think also intersectionalities are so important, um, because we can't just say that all Filipino Americans are the same or have the same experiences exactly. or the same belief systems. Mm -hmm. um, but that those factors like immigration and uh, socioeconomic status and religion and, you know, current religious practices and, um, you know, age even like skin color, like all of these things impact how Filipino Americans um, may perceive uh, so many different things, you know, in the same way that like, you know, some, uh, it, it's not that all young people are liberals or Democrats, um, but rather there are also still some um, uh, young folks who might have more conservative views. And then for, for them, it might be other factors like um, immigration status and uh, religion and things like that too. So, you know, I think there, yeah, there will always be these, uh, these generational divides. Um, what I hope uh, can happen is um, that people can, um, you know, really just be more educated about things as opposed to just making these like blanket presumptions um, and in gaining that education, um, then you can create like your, uh, your, worldview, your perspective on how you want to approach, approach certain things as opposed to just like, you know, watching Fox News and just believing everything that they, they tell you that may not be based on science or research. Yeah, you know, it's funny you bring up, you know, you bring up the political uh, aspect of it. And, you know, just to let you know, we did have um, stand-up comedian Eric Esteban on the Rise mm -hmm. and Shine, and we had him just in time when uh, the current president was being inaugurated or he won the election. Uh, mm -hmm. back in November and stuff. And so we can get political, but we, we try not to, but, you know, you can just kind of sense, uh, you know, where we stand on things on, in terms of health, uh, sure. you know, whatever the, the big lie that's, that's unfortunately being spread around right now and everything like that. Um, in terms of the COVID pandemic, I mean, you brought up nurses and mm -hmm. that's pretty personal to me because that's just how my mom came in from the Philippines because mm -hmm. um, she graduated med school and then in the late 60s she was that fourth wave of professionals that came to the United States with her with her classmates and yeah. uh, set up shop in Chicago and uh, been a registered nurse ever since and so it's interesting you bring up that aspect of it because now you know there's a project that's being um, that's being in production right now called Nurses Unseen shout out to the uh, director and to the producers of that uh, the, that documentary and basically they're focusing on the nurses who had passed away during the, the pandemic yeah. and it's all Filipino and so yeah. you have that certain dichotomy there it's like yeah you have these real conservative views from our from our elders but yet you know their daughters or their 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 ates or their kuyas you know they're they're mm -hmm. dying 
you know, and it's not a big lie because this is a virus that's just not here, here in the U S it's worldwide. Yeah. And so for, for them to have vaccine hesitancy or not listening to the mask mandates, even though, um, you know, at this point in time, the mask mandates will be lifted somewhat, but even still me personally, I'm still going to keep my mask on because the virus is not going to end. Yeah. It's, I I have a feeling and you probably agree with me, Kevin. I mean, this is going to be one of those flu shots kind of virus. Like we're going to have to probably take it every year or two years because it's not going to be invisible when they lift the mandates and everything. So you bring up a lot of interesting points within our community that, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of discussion going on with our community leaders and, and within our national leaders and everything. So, you know, I'm glad that you brought up all those very, very important points um, yeah. about this COVID pandemic. I mean, it's just been, it's been a roller coaster, but it, depending on your perspective, depending on where you are, um, you know, we all have our certain viewpoints and it's like, you know, what can we do? What can yeah. we do to improve the situation? Really? Yeah. Speaking of, uh, you know, Rex had brought up, uh, you know, different viewpoints and whatnot. Uh, you know, Kevin, you are a, you're a PhD, you work in a, a college. What, uh, how about your students? How are they, uh, yeah. h- how have they reacted in the last year to things, yeah. in particular your Filipino American students without getting too right. uh, personal so they don't watch this interview and say, hey, he's right. talking about me. Right, so I'm not chase messing about them. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, not really. Well, you know, well, I mean, you know, one thing real quick, Rex, is like my mom was a nurse too, or is, an, is a retired nurse. Um, when she here. first yeah. came, when she first uh, came, she she went to Chicago too in the 60s. I wonder if they knew each other. Were they friends? Are we cousins now? We <laughs> we um, but, <laughs> but like, and they were amongst the first. So uh-huh. like, you know, she, but she worked at Cook, Cook County Hospital. Ask your mom if that was where she worked too. Yeah. That's where no I was way. born. I was born. No at way. Cook- oh, wow. So, okay. I think we're cousins Connection. now. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, so anyway, but but to your question, yes, students have had it really hard. I mean, we've all had it really hard and, and uh, we've all had it hard in different ways. I mean, I think for students, a big um, part of it is just like, they are required to be behind a computer like for all, all day, you know? And while people who work are able to do it, like, you know, I, I imagine people have more like autonomy to just get up and move and, and that sort of thing. But for students, like, it just feels like they have less power in that situation. Um, so for me, like, you know, I tried to get them to not be on the computer or to work at their own time, um, to not do like only like synchronous classes, which means, you know, that you meet with them online every single, uh, t- at a certain time, every time. single week. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think it, I think it's been really hard. And you know, what's funny is like I think um, uh, when the pandemic first started and we're really into it, we were all like sort of like um, you know, oh, I just can't wait to go back to work. I can't wait to like see people again. I can't wait to hug people again. And now I'm like at this point where you know I've been vaccinated and mm-hmm. have been for a while now. Um, and uh, and they're talking about us going back to work. And I was like, I don't want to go back to work and see people again, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, like, I, so it's like kind of like a, we, I wish we can go back to sort of work. Like I, I do like something, <laughs> um, like, can we just be a hybrid model forever, you know? Um, but, you know, I think it's been, it's been hard. And I think for Filipino American students, I think one of the things that's come up a lot is, um, you know, if they, if they're uh, you know, from a traditional Filipino family, and so for us in New York, it would be like Filipino family that like lives in Queens. Um, uh-huh. It means that they That's have my family. like, <laughs> yeah, they have like 20 people in a house. Um, and so, this you know, generational, I, man. Wow. Yeah. And so oh like when gosh. they have, when, when they're on their Zoom call, I was like, it's very common to see like, you know, a, a Lola in the background, uh, you know, um, <laughs> and, and even like, you know, with other students of color too, you're constantly seeing other people and, mm-hmm. and, and then the student like yelling, like, stop saying, stop yelling, <laughs> you know, um, and that's just part of the experience. But I mean, I, for me, like, um, I, with my students, I've been very upfront, like saying like, Hey, like, just keep it real. Like no need to, um, pretend that, uh, you know, we're not all going through it. If you need to turn your camera off, that's great. If you keep it on, that's fine. Um, and so, you know, it's just, 
we, I, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and I hope that we get there sooner than later um, as a country and as a global society. Um, and also, I don't really want to see my coworkers every day again. So, yeah. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a teacher who went back to work, I couldn't agree with you more. I, there's certain yeah. people I don't want to see every day. So <laughs> right. I was enjoying right. being at home. but <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, um, for sure. I see in the background, and I have my copy too. I feel like a jerk that I didn't have my copy. Is that a second edition? I, I thought the original cover was black. Is yeah, it... this is a new edition. Um, yeah, Filipino American Psychology. I have the first edition, thank yeah, you. Yeah, this is second edition. <laughs> Let me get the glare out. Um, so yeah, so this came out last year um, uh, oh, during great. the pandemic. Um, and so it's, a, it's an update to the first edition, which was first published in 2009 and then uh, republished in 2011. Um, but it, it covers, you know, everything regarding Filipino American mental health issues um, from identity to colonial mentality to family dynamics um, to gender and sexuality and, and all sorts of things. So, you know, it's been really um, uh, fun to, to be able to, you know, tell stories from our community. Um, I wish I had books like this when I was mm -hmm. growing up. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it would help me to like, you know, understand, you know, my family when I was growing up. Um, and I hope that young people um, have been like, uh, you know, able to read it and, and tell their parents that like, you know, things that they experience are normal um, and not just yeah. like, um, you know. I, I think it's so important that you that you just alluded to that you wish you had books like that, because, you know, like, you know, especially during Filipino American History Month, Mental Health Month, I'll see pictures of your book. And, you know, which which I'm sure that's got to make you thrilled. But, you know, I do think that also speaks to the fact that, yeah, there's not a lot of books out there. Like, I mean, right. as someone who works in education, too, I'm always, you know, I'll look at the copyright day and like, I'll be like, you know, OK, well, it's, this is 2019. Oh, that's getting a little old, right. you know, but right. like, you know, like because there's so few resources out there, your book is has become kind of like the golden standard, you know, wow. in, in a great way. So with that in mind, I know that uh, you were mentioning that you're working on another book that's that's coming out uh, uh, in 2020 yeah. in early 2022. T tell us about your yeah. new project. Sure. Yeah. So I'm part of uh, an editorial team. It's me, um, Dr. Alison Santiago Cobales, and Dr. Oh, yeah. E.J.R. David. Um, and the three of us are the uh, co-editors of the Sage Encyclopedia of Filipina, Filipina, Filipino American Studies. Oh, um, wow. And so it's an encyclopedia. There are um, 350 entries covering <laughs> a wide range of topics from history to health to activism, to psychology, to sociology, um, to humanities um, mm -hmm. and arts. Um, and so, you know, it covers everything. And so we're really excited. We have a great team of folks who are also uh, scholars and experts in those various fields who are serving our editorial board. Um, we also have, um, you know, hundreds of entries written um, by scholars, activists, uh, community organizers, um, graduate students, and so forth. So it's just, it's really exciting to um, be able to have this. You know, the one thing that I, I tell people is like, you know, remember back in the 80s i don't think people in the 90s or the 2000s but you know like <laughs> some filipino families would have like that encyclopedia set um it was always missing world like, one book. or two right i think world i still book, have that yeah i think i still have that the yeah. britannicas yes right and then like you know there would always be like one missing and that would be like the one that <laughs> yeah. you need right <laughs> um so this is what it's going to be like it's going to be an encyclopedia filipino american um, issues uh, or yeah, everything um, covering wow. the wide range of things. And so I hope all Filipinos, Filipino Americans will have this um, in their collections. And then like, you know, if you want to do a, a book report on the Bataan Death March, you can go there. If you want to do a book report on Filipino nurses, you have information there too. Um, if you want to do a book report on, on Filipino American films, um, then you have that there too. So it's a, a great resource. Um, it's, it's almost done. I want to say like 75% of the entries have been completed. Um, and, you know, we're really excited for it to, to come out. You bring up encyclopedias. I hope the three of you are not going to go door to door, you know, <laughs> knocking on Lola's house. Oh, excuse right. us. Excuse right. us. <laughs> no, you want to buy this set? <laughs> Hey, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, if you buy one, you get a free the big bag. We're not going to do that. Um, <laughs> although that would be fun. I would buy an encyclopedia with a big bag, you know? I, you know, I actually really kind of foresee this as kind of like, you know, the definitive resource. Um, yeah, I could probably see this in um, 
ever expanding Filipino American studies all around the colleges and universities oh, around this you. country and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I had this book when I took the Filipino American experience yeah. with, uh, with, uh, over at UCLA, you know, yeah. with, 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 uh, with Roy. So Roy Morales, oh, I mean, I wish yeah. we had this resource and right. stuff. Um, you know, but I guess, you know, thank you very much. Thank you to the team. I know Dr. Kubalis, she's, she's yeah. awesome. She's just yeah. awesome. Uh, but yeah, thank you to your team for putting this together. I mean, I think it's projects like this brings to the forefront. Um, you know, we've been here as a community. We've been here for yeah. many, many years. It's just that now I'm glad that people like yourself and creative such as me and Ed are documenting uh, our experiences, whether it be in film, TV, books. We need more of this so that our next generation knew knows what we've been doing um, yeah. in our in our lives in our in our activist lives uh, in the Filipino American community. So thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Speak, speaking of that, um, you know, it's it's a popular question that comes up, but I, yeah. I would think that you would be a great resource. Like, I mean, because there's so little out there. Like, do you have uh, authors or researchers or? or sources that you recommend to people when they come up to you and say, Kevin, I, I want to learn more. What, what should I read? Like, what do you, what do you say to them? Yeah. I mean, depending on what they're looking for, like, you know, yeah, we have to know off the top of our heads, who are the people um, that they should be reading. So if people, um, you know, want to know more about history, I automatically say, look at uh, Dr. Don Baholana Babalan's Little oh, Manila's yeah. in the Heart, right? Mm -hmm. If people yep. want to learn about like, you know, um, personal narratives or memoir, I'll say Carlos Gulasan's America's in the Heart. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, we do that. And, um, I, and, I, I, and the good thing is that there, there are more and more people who are writing. There are more and more people who are telling our stories. I mean, you know, when Brown Soup Thing came out, there were what, all of like two or three other Filipino American films, right? So like, I think um, as time progresses, like we'll have more and more um, of our stories that are told. Um, and, and the more that are told, like the more complete picture, right? Because I think mm -hmm. sometimes when you're the first, people just like um, put all of the pressure for you to represent everyone, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. Like, oh, that book was good, but it didn't include that. I was like, okay, well, it wasn't supposed to include <laughs> it wasn't that supposed Mola, to, man. you know, yep. right? Um, yep, wasn't supposed to. So, yeah, so I think, you know, I think that's a big part of it. I, and I also, you know, one of the things that, I, that I've been finding is being really uh, rewarding and beautiful is that, um, you know, for Filipino American scholars, like, I would just say, for the most part, like, you know, we're, we're all friends, we all get along, mm -hmm. we all support each other's work, we all like, yep. you know, want each other to succeed, it shouldn't be like this crap mentality that I, if in order for me to succeed, exactly. you must fail. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's the opposite. In order for, um, for us all to succeed, we should all be supporting each other because then, you know, colleges and universities will see the importance of Filipino American studies. Um, yep. Book publishers will see that Filipino American books sell. Filmmakers will see that there are mm -hmm. audiences um, or production companies will be see that there, there are audiences for, um, for these films. Um, so, you know, I hope that that's something that future generations continue to do is to, you know, recognize that the power of this you know by a nihon collective spirit um that we all need to support each other um because if we don't then you know we're actually just tearing each other down i agree with you there are so many many mountains that we can all conquer um yeah. and many different types of mountains i mean you brought up calls bull son i mean that was unofficial freshman reading when i got to college yeah. i mean it was kind of yeah. like you know hey read this i mean seriously when i got to samahan filipino they're like oh you got to read this book yeah. yeah, who's calls Busan? And then it really opened my mind, like sure. Filipinos in California, you know, mid-decade, and they were already here before yeah. I was born. And so now I got to know those perspectives, know uh, yeah. that Filipino Americans were here. And that actually made me more proud um, yeah. to like, you know, fighting the struggle and fighting what we all face in the Filipino American community. So I, you're preaching to the choir, Kevin, preaching to the choir. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. <laughs> well, we um, we you know, we we know that uh, you, you know, we thank you for uh, we we thank you for being our historic first 
person yes. who we've interviewed on a non-Saturday. We we have never <laughs> interviewed anybody on yeah. any day other than a Saturday. But but I knew that uh, that when we hit you up, we were like, no, we got to have Kevin Nadal on here. So so we appreciate that. You are historic for, for those of you watching right now. It's a Thursday as we tape this, but we do want to thank you for coming on. We do have one more segment to go. Uh, our 13 things. We've got to pay some bills, so we're going to run a quick promo here, but uh, we'll be back with our 13 things segment. Hi, this is Walter Bohols. I'm proud to be one of the co-founders of Philam Creative and serve as a member of the board of directors. In case you didn't know about us, I'd like to share with you our mission statement. Philam Creative Incorporated educates and advocates Filipino American entertainment community and all looking for a collaborative workspace in order to achieve greater representation and career advancement. Although we're based in Southern California, Film Creative's reach can be felt worldwide. If you're interested in joining us behind the scenes to produce or promote our many programs and initiatives, visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org and contact us to learn how you can join our cause. For students, we also have internships available for you to gain valuable experience. Visit us to learn more at philamcreative.org. All right, and we are back. Thank you guys for staying tuned to Rise and Shine. Uh, we are here with our special guest, and now we're gonna be doing the segment called 13 Things, things that maybe our guest will hopefully divulge so you get to know him a little <laughs> better. So our guest, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Hi, my name is Dr. Kevin Adal. I am a professor of psychology and author and a scholar activist. Jeremiah, please put 13 seconds on the clock and go. All right, Kevin, let's get to know you a little bit. So you are an activist, an author, and a college professor. Can you recommend for us a favorite activist, author, and college professor? Oh, gosh. Um, activist, uh, let's go with uh, Kalia Mendoza of New York, uh, amazing mm -hmm. activist. Um, author, let's go with uh, Dr. Don Boholano Mabalon and uh, Dr. EJR David. Um, and professor, let's go with... Uh, uh, Dr. Alison Santiago Gubales, I covered my friends. Um, I mean, but also, you know, I, I mean, I'm also, I want to shout out um, Uncle Royal Morales and, uh, and yeah. Fred and Dorothy Cordova too, our elders mm -hmm. who, um, even though they may not have been, I never took their classes officially, um, just hearing their wisdom um, has always, you know, been very meaningful for me. All right. If you were not an activist or an author or a professor, what would you want to do instead? Oh gosh, I hate this question because it means that I'm not doing what I should be doing. Um, but in reality, uh, I mean, the seven-year-old in me always wanted to be a Broadway star yeah. um, and it just never happened because, you know, my mom was practical instead of being a momager. Um, but I'm okay. Uh, I have friends who are on Broadway now and when I visit them backstage, I take my pictures and yeah. pretend that I'm the star. Um, but maybe someday I will... Um, have an opportunity to perform um, on Broadway. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of, uh, you had talked about uh, sometimes not being on it. So what is your biggest distraction, good or bad, preventing you from getting work done? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I... <sighs> I think uh, one of the things I hated about the pandemic is uh, my judgmental iPhone, who every day would say, your screen time is 14 hours today. Oh, yeah. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, stop judging me, iPhone. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, you know, what did we do before our, our social media, before our devices? Like, and why am I spending 14 hours on my device? But, you know, so I think it's, it's social media, it's... Um, you know, apps, games, um, like we used to just be able just to chill. But so mm -hmm. I think that that's it. I have to specifically like turn my phone off or put it to the side in order for me to really do work. Um, when I do writing and especially like pre-pandemic, if I would go to a cafe, I would have mm -hmm. to turn my inter internet off um, oh. because the second you're on, like that's when you like, you know, start <laughs> looking up the history of Ube for no reason um, when you're <laughs> not doing anything about Ube. You just wanted to look that up, you know? Love it. 
I love it. Okay. Um, if you could run a nonprofit, what type of cause would it benefit? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, my first thought is, is uh, trans and queer people of color. Um, mm -hmm. If I had the money, um, you know, even specifically like queer and trans Filipinx folks. Um, uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, and then for me, like, I guess that's, you know, just from Pride Month, um, thinking about how uh, Marcia P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, that's what they started was STAR, um, the street trans best day activism. Um, and, uh, you know, just like, I think that still needs to be done. Um, get so many trans and queer people of color are being kicked out of their homes. And so um, having that resource to celebrate them would be uh, really nice and loving. Okay. What's something peculiar that not a lot of people know about you? Oh gosh. Um, I spent 14 hours a day on my phone. Apparently. <laughs> I was going to um, say that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think people know that, you know, what's actually funny and I'm, I'm not going to admit what it is, but I play like the dumbest games. I'm that guy that like, you know, when you're on an app and then like, you know, you have to watch an ad, like I'll download that game and then I'll play oh, that game until they ask me to download another app and yeah. then I'll download that game. Um, I love and it. so what's funny and I you know I say this because like you know I think people think I'm like this nerd oh I don't know if they think this but they like they know that I write a lot right um mm -hmm. but if they only knew how much time I wasted um uh, on like really dumb like you know horrible games that I'm too embarrassed to ever admit to um yeah that that's love what it. people don't know about me yeah all right what is uh oh, I'm sorry I jumped ahead here what's your favorite place in the Philippines uh Barakay, um white sandy beach uh zone two i don't know if anyone knows what that means um but uh Barakay is divided into zone three zone i think it's zone th one is the most touristy and um, then mm -hmm. zone three is the least touristy so i'm like a middle like i want it to be a little touristy but not not too much okay um what's the most beautiful place that you have ever seen oh Barakay. oh i said that right. quickly so that's that probably nice. it. yeah that's Love beautiful it. white sands of Barakay Aklan um, on Panay Island. Okay. I'm going to give you some locations. Tell us what you like to do the most in those locations. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh. Outdoors. <laughs> um, not hike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not run. Um, sit. Lie, lie down. Do nothing. Outdoors. Yeah. Your living room. Um, cuddle with my children and my dog. The Philippines. Um, eat, uh, mm. eat all the, the meat, all the pork. Mm. Um, what's funny is like, I'm technically like a vegetarian, pescatarian, <laughs> um, but when I'm in the Philippines, it's like, I'm on a mission to eat everything. Okay. What do you like doing on vacation? Uh, sleeping. I don't get to sleep as much as I'd like. So I like sleeping. Um, and then if I'm like, you know, in a sunny place, I'll sleep in the sun so I could get darker. Okay. Yeah. Online. Um, stop people. No, I don't know. Um, like, uh, I, I do like, I, I, I like to like gain like random knowledge about the most random people. Like once I get like on a Wikipedia, like I'll just start like, you know, going down the rabbit hole and finding out the most obscure information about people. So uh, speaking, uh, just a quick aside, uh, speaking of Wikipedia, you were the first person to have put on Wikipedia that you were in brown soup thing. And I remember I nice. asked you, I was like, how can I get my movie on damn Wikipedia? But anyway, just an aside. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh last, uh, last question of uh, what you like to do in the where, uh, in your bedroom. Oh gosh, that's Bosco's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> family show, family show, family show. <laughs> Family show. Uh, family show. You know, I, yeah, I mean, maybe when I was in my 20s, it would be more bustos. Uh, but uh, <laughs> in my, in my 40s, I like to sleep. Like, I don't know how I, I don't know how I ever went without sleeping for very long. You know, I used to be that guy who would like, uh, you know, party until like 4 a.m. and then teach an 8 a.m. class. Like, I don't know how I did that. Um, uh, but, you know, I got tenure, so that was fine. Um, but like, you know, like, I don't like I, that. The thought of that just stresses me out now. Like, you know, but like that, I like sleeping. Sleeping is amazing. I wish I could do it all the time. All right, Kevin, um, let's get a little more serious about you. Okay. First, before I start a uh, game on the app, Xbox, that's all I got to say. Okay. So um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
little more serious here. Okay. So tell us your four favorite types of food or just food in general that you got to have. Um, four types of food in general. Remember you're vegetarian, have. right? <laughs> I know. I mean, am I thinking about like on my cheat days or, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, we're, you know, like we're talking about Filipino things. Um, I mean, this Filipino question is, can I say Filipino food? Yeah, um, but for I, sure. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, so if I'm going to go with like Filipino, if I'm going to eat meat, I'm going to go hard with like Filipino meat. So oh. I like my, my breakfast meats. Um, oh. You're a Tocino and longanisa. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like, um, you know, like uh, kare kare, like oxtail. Um, and then the fourth would be, uh, you know, like just a, a pork adobo. Like that's that's where we're gonna go now. I'm like salivating. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, family recipes. What family recipe of yours is better than mine? Oh gosh. Um, okay, so family recipe that I can make personally um, is my Filipino spaghetti um, ah. because the trick is that the more sugar, the better and the more hot dog <laughs> chunks, the better. Um, and that's about it. Uh, but I think like, you know, my mom, like, you know, makes the most amazing, like, uh, Bonsai Canton, Bonsai oh. Canton. Um, those are like, that's, that's the secret. Um, although I can't necessarily make that myself. Okay. 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 So you can only have one corned beef, spam, or Vienna sausage. <sighs> spam. Uh, Let's yeah. eat balut. Yes or no? Uh, no. It freaks okay. me out. I can't do it. <laughs> I think it's because when I was like seven years old, my auntie Velvet would run after the balut with us, like towards yep. us. And yep. I just, that's a nightmare. Like I will always remember. Uh, I think that's a beak. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Tell us your favorite yes. Filipino dessert. Oh, um, uh, I guess ube ice cream in Halo Halo. Um, oh. So Halo Halo itself is amazing, oh. but sometimes like they like don't put enough ube ice oh, cream, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. or like sometimes they don't put it at all, which is oh, weird. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. Halo Halo, ube in the Halo. Okay, then tell us now your favorite non-Filipino dessert. Um, they. I mean, my first thing was apple pie, but I don't know if that's the truth. That was just something <laughs> that was something I liked a lot when I was a kid. But the I was American thinking, in you. Yeah. yeah non yeah. Fourth of dessert. July is coming up. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess like an ice cream or a milkshake. Milkshake. I like a good milkshake. Amen. If you have one, tell us your favorite boba drink. Um, uh, uh, the uh, What's it called? Uh the, the ube one, uh, taro. So, yeah, taro. the taro. Yeah, the okay, wait, why and, I stuttered is because they, they call it different things everywhere mm -hmm. you go, right? Yeah, exactly. can I, yeah. yeah, and can I interrupt here? Like, okay, I know you used to live in LA and like, I'm really <laughs> annoyed with New York in this regard. Do you call it boba or do you call it Oh, I call bubble? it boba. Thank oh, you. Oh, no, I call it boba. Thank you. Um, you know, I think New Yorkers, like half people call it boba. Um, but when I was in the Midwest, it was 100% people called it bubble tea. And that bothered me so yeah, much. No, I was like, what is that? This is a bubble tea. Amen. This is boba. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Sorry, there you had go. to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin, tell us your favorite chocolate. Um, uh, chocolate meat? No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah, that was my I mean, baby food, by the way. So there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I like a good chocolate meat. Um, maybe like a... Like a um, like a milk chocolate with almonds is pretty Ooh, good. Pretty go. standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell us your favorite fruit. Um, me? No. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> happy pride. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite fruit, uh, uh, an avocado. Uh, yeah. But uh, like, so Filipino style, like, I don't know. Oh. Like, cut up the avocado and put with milk and sugar um, uh, some people think i'm weird i'm like no i swear that's something good. that people do yeah it's delicious but i i've had i've like had it. family members put cut up the avocado put some milk or you get some shave ice and the sugar you could have it either way refreshing yeah. man. delicious refreshing. all yeah. right last thing in this section you tell us your favorite alcoholic beverage um tito's and soda with a splash of cranberry um mostly because i just want it to have some color so it just doesn't look like water <laughs> <laughs> okay uh last set of questions here now do you have plastic 
wrapped around your remote control or anything at your home? Um, I do not have plastic around my remote control, but wait, there has to be something I have that's wrapped in plastic. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll definitely like, like my iPhone will be wrapped in plastic for the first year that I have it because, <laughs> yeah. you know, like the plastic screen, I was like, no, just in case, I don't want that to come off. Um, but I am a fan of plastic when, when necessary, you know, Filipinos are the original hoarders. Like we're the ones who keep like, you know, hundreds of plastic bags, you know, wrap everything, your sofas wrapped in plastic like that. Uh -oh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So recommend one Filipino or Phil Am book, movie, or TV show. Um, brown soup thing. No, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Filipino, um, book, book movie uh, or TV show or TV show, um, movie. Um, I'm going to shout out, uh, Tess Paras uh, the patients, yes. um, a new short film that she had made uh, or debuted like last year. Um, and, uh, book, um, I'm going to go with uh, EJ DeVids. Uh, we have not stopped trembling yet. Wow. That's, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now let's play Mahjong. Or how good are you? Great. I'm amazing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you ever been stood up on a date? Uh, no, but I've left a date after five minutes um, mm. and just got up and left and said, nah, I'm not going to do this. Okay, so you yeah. probably answered my next question. Then, have you ever dumped someone? Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 well, I haven't dated in a long time. I've been married for a long time, but I, I, I have been the ghoster. Um, and <laughs> you know, like ghosting gets like a bad rap. Like I think ghosting sometimes is just the polite thing to do. Like, why tell somebody that you know you're just not attracted to them anymore? That's just rude, you know. So it's just like. <laughs> stand them up and just never talk to them again and, you know, hope for the best. All right. Oh my God. Last question. Look directly to the camera okay. and say one sentence to your haters or your criticizers. Oh gosh. God bless you. I actually love you. You make me a better person. <laughs> um, so thanks. All right. Here is the yeah. final question. You get to be the guest host for rise and shine. Name a Filipino or Asian guest, dead or alive, who you would want to interview. Oh, gosh, dead or alive. Okay, so like the nerd in me would say like, oh, I want to meet like Larry Leong or Philip Vera Cruz. And mm -hmm. yeah, I would. That would be great. Um, but I mean, what would, what would I really want to meet? Um, but <laughs> like, I mean, I would I, if I had this, I would want to meet someone like very fun and I don't know who would that be um I I I mean I, just to find out more I, I'm probably gonna have haters I'm sorry I'm just gonna say it I I would like to just to to have Amelda Marcos from the 1970s I would just love to <laughs> like just find out what the f was happening there you know um great answer because yeah yeah That's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but no I don't support the Marcoses uh mm -hmm. but you know just as a as a uh you know just a fascination piece um I think that would be an interesting That's conversation a, that might be the best answer we've had Rex <laughs> oh cool oh amazing uh, we've had varied answers but yeah that that's freaking amazing yeah that's so fascinating yeah I mean I yeah I don't know I just just amazing hey Kevin thank you so much participating in 13 things ladies and gentlemen you can catch rise and shine every Tuesday on YouTube and also catch us where you get your favorite podcast Kevin thank you so much again for joining us on rise and shine and please the last thing tell our audience where people can find you and your socials Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you can follow me um, on uh, all of my social media, Instagram and Twitter at Kevin Nadal um, or my website, KevinNadal.com. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Kevin. Absolutely. And can I just say, um, I know that you haven't done stand up in a while. Like I've been laughing this whole time. Like, why <laughs> yeah, exactly. are you, like you need to go back to stand up, brother. Like, this is great. We've, we've loved Maybe that. that's how I'm going to get on Broadway. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so uh, this has been an unplugged episode. So on behalf of my good friend Rex and Ronnie and Kami, we love you, even though you're not here this week. Thanks for watching this week, and please support Kevin Nadal. Thanks for watching Rise and Shine. Hey, everyone. Rex here with Rise and Shine. 
Did you know there's not one, not two, but three different ways you could check out our weekly Rise and Shine episodes? New episodes drop every Tuesday on our YouTube channel at Rise and Shine FAC. And you can listen to the Rise and Shine podcast as you commute to work or walking your daily steps by downloading Rise and Shine wherever you get your favorite podcast. And lastly, you can always join our live audience tapings on Facebook Live, Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's three different ways you could fill up on your Rise and Shine diet every week. So please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page at Rise and Shine FAC and watch new episodes every Tuesday. Or download us wherever you get your favorite podcast. And thanks again for watching and listening to Rise and Shine. rise and shine. Hey guys, it's Ed. Thanks for listening today. And did you guys know that Rise and Shine is part of the Philam Creative Umbrella and that we're a registered nonprofit? And as a nonprofit organization, Philam Creative depends on generous donations from fine folks like you to help us to continue to produce great programming like Rise and Shine. Please consider making a donation to help produce shows like Rise and Shine. Our Venmo is at PhilAmCreative. That's at PhilAmCreative. And if you don't do Venmo, but you still want to donate a few quid to us, then drop us an email at riseandshinefac at gmail.com. That's riseandshinefac at gmail.com, and we'll help you out. We at Rise and Shine appreciate your generosity. Every dollar helps. Rise and shine. This is Kami. I hope you're enjoying the show. Did you know we have a mailing list? And did you know that you can contact us if you want to say hello to Ed, Rex, Ronnie, Veronica, or even me? Just send us an email at riseandshinefac. That's one word spelled out. Rise and shine FAC at gmail.com. Again, that's rise and shine FAC all spelled out at gmail.com. Join our mailing list so you can be the first to find out about the latest rise and shine news. Hey, Rex here with Rise and Shine. And I want you to do something for me. Help support Rise and Shine by liking, subscribing, and following the show online. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, all under at Rise and Shine FAC. So follow the show on all social media platforms on all one word at Rise and Shine FAC. Thanks again for all the love and support. And tell all your friends about Rise and Shine. Rise and Shine. Hey everyone, this is Ed, and I got a question for you. Did you know that Rise and Shine is only one of the many things produced by Philam Creative? That's right, Philam Creative has been producing great stuff, like Rise and Shine, for over 10 years. If you want to learn more about the premier Filipino-American organization that has been the number one advocate for the Asian-American entertainment community for over a decade, then visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org. Learn more about the organization that produces your favorite show, Rise and Shine. Hi, this is Walter Bohlholz. I'm proud to be one of the co-founders of Philam Creative and serve as a member of the Board of Directors. In case you didn't know about us, I'd like to share with you our mission statement. Philam Creative Incorporated educates and advocates for the Filipino-American entertainment community and all looking for a collaborative workspace in order to achieve greater representation and career advancement. Although we're based in Southern California, Philam Creative's reach can be felt worldwide. If you're interested 
in joining us behind the scenes to produce or promote our many programs and initiatives, visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org. And contact us to learn how you can join our cause. For students, we also have internships available for you to gain valuable experience. Visit us to learn more at philamcreative.org. Rise and shine. Hey guys, it's Ed. Thanks for listening today. And did you guys know that Rise and Shine is part of the Philam Creative umbrella and that we're a registered nonprofit? And as a nonprofit organization, Philam Creative depends on generous donations from fine folks like you to help us to continue to produce great programming like Rise and Shine. Please consider making a donation to help produce shows like Rise and Shine. Our Venmo is at Philam Creative. That's at Philam Creative. And if you don't do Venmo, but you still want to donate a few quid to us, then drop us an email at riseandshinefac at gmail.com. That's riseandshinefac at gmail.com, and we'll help you out. We at Rise and Shine appreciate your generosity. Every dollar helps. Rise and shine. Hey guys, Ronnie here. I know my sister Veronica likes to mess with the crew, but we all really work hard to produce a quality program for you. Rise and Shine is produced by Philam Creative in association with RAS Music Group and Millennius LLC. Rise and Shine is written, created, produced, and hosted by Ed Mullen and Rex Sampaga. It also features Veronica Cagneso, Kami Koyamko, and me, Ronnie Cagneso. I'm also our show's stage director, which isn't easy when you gotta keep Ed and Rex in check. And finally, our amazing technical director is Jeremiah Castro. Thanks for tuning in every week to Philam Creative's number one show, Rise and Shine.